welcome to this new video of my DIY remote control surface. In this video, what I'm going to show you is the new uh, strip uh, that I've recently moved from the Atmel platform to the STM32 platform. But before to start, I would like to ask you to subscribe as usual if you want to support my work. Uh, to give a thumbs up to the video if you like it and to hit the bell to stay tuned. Um, so uh, what you are seeing here is the uh, uh, schematic of my new uh, strip based on STM32 uh, F072. Uh, the first things that you might notice if you have uh, uh, already seen my past video and you are familiar with the, the way I work is that the interface of this schematic is different uh, than the one that I used to have. Uh, why is different? Uh, simply because this is not anymore Fusion 360 Electronics or Eagle uh, as I used to use. Uh, but it's a uh, KiCad or KiCad and here I open a uh, very small and quick parenthesis and really I'm sorry uh, if I'm gonna uh, put up a, a bit of a rant uh, but something I think really annoying happened uh, to me uh, with Fusion 360. Uh, before to start working on the project I knew that uh, this new strip was going to have a quite big uh, PCB. Uh, I knew already that the PCB was going to be 33 centimeter by uh, 4 centimeter, which gives in total 132 uh, centimeter square. Uh, um, and I knew that uh, the commercial, the non-commercial license, the free one that I was using with uh, a Fusion 360, might have some uh, uh, some limitation. For this reason, uh, I I went to the Autodesk page. I uh, uh, deeply checked uh, if there was this limitation, and in fact there was. And what was this limitation in terms of uh, uh, sizes? And what I have found on the Italian page as well as on the US page of uh, uh, AutoCAD is that the limitation was 80 centimeter, 80. Uh, by 80 centimeter, which gives you a total of 6,400 uh, centimeter square. And at this point, I said to myself, "It's fine. Uh, my PCB is, gonna, is, is going to be much uh, smaller, so I'm not going to I'm not going to have any issue on this." And so I started working uh, on the schematic, which for me, for my abilities and capabilities, it's a quite complex one. When I finished to work on the schematics and I start moving into the PCB, I immediately noticed that uh, the application was returning an error each time I was trying to place some components or to route some, some uh, wire in certain areas of the PCB saying that I was not allowed to do that operation in that area because of the limitation of my license. At this point I went to the community, to the forum, to the Autodesk forum and I placed a uh, um, a post. The answer that I that I got was quite uh, uh, surprising. Uh, a guy of Autodesk told me that uh, uh, the limitation is not 80 by 80, but is 80 square centimeters, which is 10 centimeters by 8 centimeters, or uh, I don't know, 20 centimeters by 4 centimeters, and so on and so forth, which was not at all enough uh, for my project. At this point, I have uh, posted uh, into the forum uh, uh, the screenshot of the page of Autodesk saying that the limitation was 80 by 80 and the guy commented this saying there's a typo okay there's a typo a, a typo can happen an, an error can happen that's not an issue but point is that I I've just finished to work on my on my uh, schematic that I repeat for my abilities for my capability it's a quite complex one uh, took me a lot of time to set it up and I was not happy at all of the fact that either I was supposed to uh, uh, to pay the license which is 74 euros a month so for me it's really a lot of money uh, or I was going to or I was forced to move to another application restart the work from scratch and what makes me uh, even more upset was that uh, uh, at that point, no one of Autodesk came to me to uh, to even say sorry, okay, to maybe propose a solution. Uh, uh, 
nothing at all. So at this point, for sure, I was not going to buy any license because uh, for me, giving money uh, uh, to the company that caused uh, such an issue to me and didn't even say sorry was not an option. Uh, uh, and so I moved to KitKat. But it can happen that from the bad, some good could come. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, I've been forced to discover uh, this uh, new application, new for me, KiCad or KiCad. And I have to say that I was really impressed and I am really impressed. The last version, the 7, is really a very complete uh, application. This application is open source, it's completely free. But now it's really very competitive. And I have to say that there's nothing less than Fusion 360, at least for the functionality that I use. And actually, to be to be fair, I have to say that in, in certain area, it is even superior respect to a Fusion 360. There's no limitation, no limitation in the sheets. You see, here I placed uh, um, several sheets uh, for my circuit because I split the circuit in several sheets. You know that with Fusion 360, uh, uh, with the non-commercial license, you cannot use more than two sheets. There are no limitations in the size of the PCB, obviously, and I have to say that the user interface is much better than the one uh, of Fusion 360, which is inherited from uh, Eagle, and, you know, it's known and recognized as a quite crappy one. Uh, so, all in all, I am super happy of this change, uh, and the work and the result that I'm going to show you right now uh, is really showing that this application is really mature uh, to be 100% competitive uh, uh, at least in respect to application like Fusion 360. So let's go a little bit into details. Here you have the first uh, design which is the one around the STM32F072, the MCU. To be frank and honest, this is not very different than the master uh, fader uh, one that you've seen in a previous video. You have here, here, and here uh, um, the coupling capacitor, the one requested by the uh, data sheet of the MCU. You have my usual uh, LEDs uh, here for heartbeat, so blinking every second and saying that everything is working in terms of clocks. Uh, the power one, which is saying that the circuit is up. Uh, then, uh, uh, as usual, I have a, 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 a touch one, an operation one for the self-movement of the motor, motorized feather, and then two LEDs here, a signaling TX and RX uh, of the UART. Uh, on top of this, here again, uh, uh, the same as uh, the master feather, you have here all the components needed for required by the TSC, which is the uh, capacitive touch peripheral provided by the SD platform. What it changed is here, where you have connection to the uh, uh, strip buttons. Uh, so the select, the mute, the solo, and the arm button. So switching to the buttons here, you have the four buttons uh, with their uh, LEDs uh, here and their uh, 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 resistor here. Then moving on the power section, you have, of course, the 9 volt, which is the main power. And then you have the MAX 604, which is a voltage regulator bringing the 9 volts to 3.3 volts needed for the MCU. You have here the uh, BD6221F, which is the motor control. And you have here the switch for the reset. Then you have connectors. You will see there are several connectors into this uh, uh, PCB. You have uh, four JST uh, connectors. The one that goes into the motorized fader. Uh, the one uh, that uh, power uh, the DC motor of the motorized fader here. And then you have the uh, main power one for the nine volts here. And finally, you have the UART one with RX and TX. Uh, uh, different from these four, you have a, a, a fifth connector here, which is a DuPont connector, and this is uh, for the uh, SWD debugger programming, debugging programming interface. This is for program uh, and debug the MCU. Then you have meters. Here you have the 14 LEDs with the two uh, uh, shift register piloting the, the, the LEDs. You have the 
the port area uh, here where you have the uh, rotary encoder here you have the switch embedded into the rotary encoder here you have the 11 LEDs which are surrounding the rotary encoder and then you have the two uh, um, uh, shift register piloting the 11 LEDs plus here the LEDs of the um, uh, of the um, uh, four buttons that's it in terms of the schema so let's move to the PCB and there you go this is the PCB as you can see uh, main difference from the the, the uh, existing the, the old um, uh, strip you have everything in one piece if you remember in the old strip you have one piece here containing the V port the four buttons the MCU and so on then you have another a piece which was uh, uh, sitting next to the first one with the LEDs and you had the third uh, uh, PCB uh, which was soldered into the uh, motorized feather containing the um, uh, motor control. Uh, the PCB is made of uh, two uh, uh, layers. I, I thought that it was needed to go uh, to four in reality I've been able to route everything into lasers which is much better for me and actually I have to say that with the PCB in the end I realized that probably I could even make it smaller uh, the density of the component is actually not very high in the front layer which we can see here there you go you have the uh, rotary encoder, you have the 11 LEDs surrounding the rotary encoder, you have the four buttons, uh, you have the control LEDs that I was mentioning before, you have here the, uh, uh, the meter bar, and you have here the uh, reset switch button. If we move to the back, to the bottom layer, there you go, you have all the ICs, you have the, uh, uh, you have the MCU here, you have the four here, here, here and here, uh, uh, the four um, uh, uh, shift registers, you have the motor control here, and finally you have the four uh, connectors, J JST connector here, here, here and here and the dew point one here and here you have the voltage regulator that's it for the uh, for the circuit as usual I have requested a market manufacturer to uh, produce uh, the PCB and, uh, and so uh, uh, now we're, we're gonna see it in uh, operation I anticipate that everything is working perfectly so I didn't have one single issue so I'm very happy of the work done and I repeat once again I'm super super happy to have discovered this keycap here is switched on with all the lights on the meter the buttons and the ring around the rotary encoder Uh, I have already connected to uh, a project of, uh, of uh, Cubase so if I launch the track here there you go as usual you can see that everything is working here in terms of the uh, meter bar uh, you have all the button here you can put it mute like this in solo like this can enable and disable the R button. You can deselect, there you go, and select through the select button or selecting again through the capacitive touch. The capacitive touch is working perfectly. There you go, and all the automation are working very fine. Here you have the left-right pump, as you can see, and also your automation are perfectly working. So uh, that's it. 
Um, in the next video, I will try to produce uh, a case uh, for the new uh, strips. Um, and, and I think that with, with this uh, project, I complete the full migration to the ST domain, which is something that makes me very happy. Uh, that's it. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the, in the next video.